Hello, thanks for taking a look at my video today. I want to talk to you about how to create a bootable USB drive with Ubuntu 11.04 NATI Narwhal. This is a relatively easy process, but for some of you who may have some difficulty either understanding the tool or knowing how it works, I'm here to give you a quick walkthrough to show you how to do it. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'd be glad to answer them as I go by. So the first thing we want to do is download the latest ISO of our uh, Ubuntu 11.04 Natty Narwhal. We've already pre-done this, so once you've downloaded a, a copy of the file, what you want to do is bring up the Startup Disk Creator tool from System Administration startup disk creator. Once we've selected this, it'll bring up the tool for us and it'll then allow, ask us or allow us to go ahead and install the, uh, or sorry, pick the ISO we wish to install. So in this case I'm going to do this. I'm just going to try and see if I can find it here. Uh, I'm doing this off screen unfortunately, but I uh, just want to make things a little bit simpler here for you. All right, so now we're done. So now I'll bring in the tool that we just started up here, the Startup Disk Creator tool. And it now we've now selected by clicking on Other, and it brings up a file requester, and we pick the location. Some of you might have uh, a CD installed on a drive. In this case, I guess detected that we've got a CD installed on a drive right now. So by that, you can tell you could pick that version if you want. But this is the one that we've selected. So we want to make sure that this is highlighted. As you can see, we've now officially clicked on it to highlight that particular version. It's very important because otherwise this one by default will automatically go through. So once we've done that, we've detected it. Um, that's what the little CD symbol tells us there. It goes, oh, I, I recognize this. And we have selected it. It then wants to have a device to use. <clears throat> so in this case, because we don't have anything that they can see right now, it says, well, I don't see a viable disk. Make sure to plug one in that's at least one gigabyte in size. Now, once you do this, you should see the drive auto detect, and you can see it comes up. We get an error about that, but that's okay. We can ignore that error. So we can see here that it has detected our device. It's, it's a two gigabyte roughly uh, pen drive and it says it's got 1.2 gigabyte of free space and that's because it has our old uh, version of Ubuntu installed on it. So we're going to go ahead and erase that and of course it's going to ask us for a password so we'll enter our password to do that and it's going to go through and do a whole bunch of stuff and eventually come back and tell us it's done. Great. So now it's done and we can tell we now have a new device with free, all the free space there. So once we've selected this, we then will select this here, the, the file system itself, make sure that's ex that is selected, and when we do this, it'll then ask us how much we want to use for reserve st storage. Um, minimum you can pick is 128, and the maximum you can pick is the amount of free space after um, Ubuntu has installed. In our case, we don't use the same disk that we use to build this as uh, we save our data on. We use separate drives for this. So in our case we're going to click on discard it on shutdown unless you save them elsewhere because we're going to save them elsewhere. But for many of you, you might pick something here. Now I wouldn't go the full amount just because that creates a completely full disk. I would go down to about just under the one gigabyte, one gigabyte mark and leave the rest as free space unused free space. And that just gives a little bit of comfort zone to the drive. Uh, some of you may think I'm foolish for making that kind of a suggestion, but it's always been my uh, perspective to leave a little bit of free space on a disk just to prevent any kind of issues in case of something. You know, you plug this into a Windows machine and Windows decides to cache something and, you know, it could cause a problem. Um, but at any point, um, once you've decided on how much free space, or if you're not going to have any f extra space for storage, um, in, in, like I said, click which one you want here, and then go ahead and click Make Startup Disk. Now, once it does this, 
it brings up the window that says okay we need you to authenticate this process so you'll enter your password to do this and then the second part comes up which now will ask us about the bootloader so we go ahead and enter our password for that and at this point the process begins um, at first it looks like wow it's going to take like seconds but it'll actually it's going to take quite a bit of time as you can see now it's starting to calculate more realistically the amount of time. 24, 25 minutes was a little ridiculous, but like I say, it's recalculating. This process is going to take about five minutes. So once it's complete, we should get a message that says installation is complete and Ubuntu is ready for us to use. If it does not, um, you know, hey, again, leave a comment below. Tell me what the error was that you got or leave a screenshot or even a video shot of what the error was and I'll be glad to help you out with uh, trying to help you through any of the problems. There's a few of the problems that typically occur. Um, for instance, if you're using a non-Ubuntu version of Linux or a GNU Linux, I should say because it tends to be pretty particular about detecting the version of Ubuntu that you're trying to install and if it's not really Ubuntu it just doesn't want to work so I usually recommend trying other tools if that's what you're attempting to do but otherwise please feel free to leave your messages below um, if you have any questions or comments thanks very much for taking a look at my video today I hope it's been entertaining and enlightening um, have yourself a great evening